Hi, this is Lentz with RMUS. Today we're going to uh, talk about the Slant Range 3PX, a multispectral camera that is, has been designed to be mounted to the uh, Matrice 200 series by DJI. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to go over is making sure, obviously, that the, the ship is fully firmware updated. Also, we're going to want to check the sky port that is mounted to the Slant Range to make sure it is firmware updated. <clears throat> so once you're connected to the ship, you can click on the Matrice 200 series icon. It will check its current firmware. And currently, uh, the firmware is current, but it's got a minus sign because it uh, doesn't necessarily recognize the slant range camera. It's only recognizing the sky port. <clears throat> But we're going to click on the sky port over here on the left hand side and check its firmware. And right now I'm current because I just updated it yesterday, but if it said that it needed to be updated, you're just going to want to click update and, and let it update the sky port. Once you've verified the ship is updated and the Skyport is updated, we can go ahead and get rid of the assistant. And we're going to want to open the 3P toolbox that you've downloaded from Slant Range after you've set up your account. Uh, the instructions are on the card that comes with the camera when you purchase it. So we'll open up the 3P toolbox. So once you've got the 3P toolbox opened up, the first thing that we're going to want to check is the firmware of the camera. So you're going to want to make sure that the ship is powered on and the camera's got an SD card with plenty of space, preferably empty. <clears throat> and you've uh, watched the, the indicator light on the light sensor make sure that it goes green-yellow and it's fully booted up. Once that's checked, you can click Firmware Update it's going to want to make sure that you're connected to the internet. I'm going to click yes and then check for updates. <clears throat> it's going to check the internet to see if there's any new ones out. If you don't have it built or downloaded to the 3P toolbox, it will download it for you. Once it's done that, uh, it's going to ask you to switch over to the camera's Wi-Fi, which is the camera's serial number and the password is slant range 3p and we'll connect once you're connected to the camera's wi-fi we can click yes it's going to check the camera's firmware and let you know if you need to update it right now the current firmware version is 10722581 and it's telling me that there's a new version available it downloaded it and it's stored inside the 3P toolbox. So we'll click on the newest one, which is 11125256, and click Update Firmware. So we'll uninstall the old firmware and reinstall the new. Once it's done that, it will ask you to restart the camera, and then you can reconnect and verify that the firmware has been updated. All right, after we've verified that the firmware is updated inside the slant range, uh, we'll go ahead and check the sensor calibration. And once it's opened, um, the only thing that slant range is letting you calibrate on your own is the compass. It's also got a gyro and an accelerometer built in. We'll click on the compass. Click start. Once you've clicked start, it's going gonna, it's gonna to see where the camera is sitting. And it's going to verify that it is upright at the moment. The box will turn yellow. And you'll pick the drone up and rotate it 360 degrees until the box turns green. You'll choose another axis until it goes yellow. Rotate 360 degrees.
we'll go nose down nose up upside down and the other side Once all six boxes are green, your calibration is complete. Now obviously you're going to want to do that outside. I'm just doing it inside for demonstration purposes. So now that we have verified that uh, the firmware is updated, uh, we've verified that the Skyport is updated, we've made sure that the compass is calibrated, uh, we can now proceed to set up a flight plan and start collecting data. So now that we've made sure that the camera is all ready to uh, operate correctly, uh, we're going to go to mission planning software. So we're going to go through the drone deploy, uh, which Slant Ran Range recommends. So we've got uh, drone deploy downloaded onto the iPad. We're going to open up drone deploy. Now one thing that you need to do uh, with Drone Deploy before you go any further is once you've got it opened, we're going to want to go to the App Market, which is up here in the top. It'll open up Drone Deploy's own App Market. <clears throat> we're going to scroll down just a little ways till we find the Slant Range uh, plugin. Open that up. and we're going to install it on my account. Install. And now the app is added to the drone deploy. We're going to go back to the main menu. And we're going to hit the plus sign down at the bottom and plan a map flight. However, one thing we got to make sure we do is we want to make sure that the used third-party camera is selected. Um, if you don't turn that on, it's going to try and uh, look for a DJI camera and it's not going to see one and it won't let you take off. So we're going to turn the th used third-party camera on, go back to the dashboard, press the plus, plan a map flight, It's going to pull up my location. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And we're just going to pull this box over this uh, vacant lot that's next door to us here. So you can open up the, the Slant Range uh, plugin. And we're going to set our side lap and front lap. We're just going to go 20% on both. And then we'll put our target altitude. I like to fly it at about 150 feet. So now we've got our target altitude, our side, side lap and front lap. It'll give you an estimated speed. Up at the top, we've got an estimated time how many acres, how many images it's going to capture. Now keep in mind, drone deploy is not, it, it's not controlling the camera. The camera's controlling itself. The camera's taking its own pictures. Nothing is telling it to take pictures except for itself. So once we've got that all mapped out and planned out, we can take the drone outside and we can put her in the air.
Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and uh, fly our uh, planned route. I'll go through the steps of uh, starting that off and getting the drone in the air. There's a couple things that you need to know uh, aside from the drone. Like I said earlier, uh, the, the slant range is its own system. So there's a button on the light sensor that you need to turn the uh, initialization of the data acquisition on. <clears throat> So we got the radio on, we've got drone deploy open, our, our flight plan ready to go. I'm gonna step over to the drone. We're gonna turn it on. When the drone's powering up, the slant range will start to boot up. You've got an indicator light here on the light sensor. It will start flashing and it will flash all three colors as it's booting up. There you go right there, you can see that. So that's its boot up process. You don't wanna disturb it while it's doing that and also you don't want to have the light sensor uh, shadowed at all. Once all three lights go solid, that's a successful boot. Once you're there, you can press and hold the button. The light will go yellow. You'll hold it for just a couple seconds and let go. <clears throat> Once the light goes green, you are uh, ready for data collection. So now that the sensor is ready to go, the, the 200's ready to fly. We'll press the takeoff button. It's gonna go through its pre-flight checklist. Download the flight plan. You probably can't see any of this in the, in the camera, but it's doing it. Now press takeoff. The drone will ascend to its uh, target altitude of 150 feet. Once it reaches that, it will fly over to its start point of your pre-planned flight. Once your flight plan is finished, the drone will return home. Currently, we're, we're in the process of landing. Once the drone has landed, you're going to want to walk over to the ship and you're going to want to press the button on the light sensor again. That's going to finish the data acquisition. Once the lights go solid, all three of them, now you can turn the drone off. You must make sure that you do that process because there's some things that the slant range does to the data uh, before the system shuts down. If it doesn't do that, it can cause problems with uh, the post-processing. And that's it.